welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and today we are in module number 1 introduction to electrochemical energy storage and conversion and uh, today i will be giving lecture number 1 fundamentals of electrochemistry definition of primary and secondary batteries now electrochemistry as you know is a vast chapter and uh, the knowledge pertinent to the understanding of the storage material that I will try to cover and for certain concept we will elaborate uh, later part of the lecture and uh, I will start first from the application areas of electrochemistry then we will introduce the topic of oxidation and reduction then more importantly electrodes and interface then we will introduce the electrochemical cells and the concept of potential voltage and polarization and I will introduce certain experimentation in electrochemistry. So, the first start with uh, electrosynthesis uh, that is probably known to all of you and there are various raw materials that is produced by electrosynthesis. Examples can be cited as aluminum, dichlorine, sodium hydroxide. One of the examples I have shown here and as you know that dichlorine, this is a raw material used for plastics and detergents. Dichlorine and sodium hydroxides, they are produced from aqueous brine solution, sodium chloride solution and uh, this kind of electrolyzer is used where you can see two electrodes are there. One is made out of uh, titanium which we call anode and another one is nickel uh, which is termed as cathode and uh, we put po positive potential to this anode and the negative potential to the cathode and these two are separated by a ion selective uh, or ion exchange membrane which will only pass sodium ion from one side to another. Now in brine solution uh, electrolysis takes place, it gets dissociated uh, and it produces hydrogen in uh, cathode and chlorine gas in anode and sodium ion they diffuses pass through this uh, ionically conducting membrane reacts with hydroxyl ions to form uh, sodium hydroxide and this is one way to make sodium hydroxide and dichlorine apart from hydrogen and this is one of the examples of electrosynthesis. Several other examples can be cited difluorine or sodium, lithium and magnesium um, in metal form they are produced through electrosynthesis of molten salts. High purity dihydrogen is produced by electrolyzing of water that produces oxygen also and today's concept, um, today's uh, uh, concern is to make oxygen in this particular uh, pandemic situation and that can be done by uh, electrosynthesis. Apart from that um, purification of certain metal in particular copper, zinc, aluminum uh, they are also done by a process called electro refining where one of the ores are used as anode and uh, the purified metal is deposited on the cathode and uh, by this process you actually purify the material. And apart from that, uh, it enables complex molecules uh, synthesis and that is particularly useful for uh, pharmaceutical industries and biotechnology, food industry are some of the examples. Now apart from this electrolyzer, uh, for surface treatment also the electrochemistry is used 
and uh, the common surface treatment uh, that you know um, either you can impart porosity or you can impart gloss in the material that is being prepared. Uh, zinc deposition against the corrosive metal that is one of the examples and which is particularly useful for car industries and also for artificial jewellery gold coating is done on silver and ornaments and uh, that uh, restore um, various ancient artifacts they are also surface treatment is important. For various types of analysis and measurements also electrochemistry is useful. One example I can cite this is the exhaust gas uh, when you analyze it it is important for you to know the oxygen content uh, to know whether the petrol has been uh, fully um, under combustion. So, to optimize the fuel efficiency in the IC engine um, we use oxygen sensor and uh, in this part of this course I will not talk about the oxygen sensor, but uh, in one of my earlier lectures we described at length their function and uh, their operation principle, construction etcetera. In biomedical field also electrochemical sensors they are used to monitor glucose and pH and also to measure certain cations and uh, new developments are being made to identify the pollutants. Apart from that polarography uh, that uses mercury drop electrode which eventually permits uh, the analysis of a variety of chemical species uh, at very low concentration, concentration as low as 10, 10 raised to minus 12 mole per liter. Uh, that kind of metal concentration can be detected in aqueous solution. So, they have variety of use. Environmental sector uh, that is uh, also important, brackish water you know desalination is important and that is done through electrodialysis for supplying fresh water to remote areas in our country. Electro deposition already I have talked about it, metallic elements like copper and zinc, cobalt, silver, gold uh, they are electro deposited on another metal surface. Concentration of uh, uh, purifying effluents through electrodialysis that is also another uh, cathodic deposition process, destroying the pollutants uh, particularly oxide oxidation of cyanides in carbon dioxide or in dinitrogen that is also important. Corrosion is another field uh, where metallic part is destroyed, so galvanization is one way and it generally occurs spontaneously by reaction with dioxygen which is dissolved in water in case of wet corrosion. And uh, fight against corrosion is still on and uh, this actually occurs uh, a significant amount of losses, economic losses uh, particularly in the gas line or uh, the saline uh, water. Um, the um, sheep etcetera uh, which are exposed to saline environment. Biochemistry is another field a significant number of uh, phenomena of the living world involved this oxidation and reduction which I will be introducing in a while from now. That reactions uh, or controlled ionic movements through membranes uh, that is there and apart from that in biochemistry uh, there are uh, increasing uh, field of uh, other applications like uh, biosensors and this sector will certainly grow in near future. So, apart from the storage you have various applications for this uh, so called electrochemistry principle. So, oxidation and reduction that is uh, uh, important part of it and in oxidation chemical elements of a species that loses one or more electrons and uh, in contrary in reduction chemical elements of a species gains electron. So, the overall reaction if you take uh, then we call this is a oxidation reduction couple. So, if uh, a reductant um, they are getting 
oxidized and it produces uh, electrons. So, the term OX is oxidant that is uh, it is capable of gaining electrons and the term red is the reductant uh, the form which is capable of giving electrons. So, we can use the term oxidant oxidizing agent or oxidized form of the couple and reductant is a reducing agent or reduced form of the couple. So, this particular reaction can be choosing uh, the direct orientation of oxidation as well as reduction. Uh, so, the product part and the reactant part that you can uh, just move to one side and uh, the left hand side is usually kept 0. And here the term V i is a stoichiometric number and it is usually positive for the product and negative for the reactant. I will cite certain examples and A i is the chemical constituents of the reaction that is being used. So, let us take an example, the redox half cell reaction of copper 2 plus and copper couple that can be written for example, in the direction of the reduction as you can see that it is getting reduced because it is taking electron uh, to form neutral copper. So, following the uh, previous convention copper you know the stoichiometric value here I will take plus 1 because it is in the product side and the reactant side uh, copper 2 plus and electron we will take minus 1 and minus 2 respectively. So, following this relation I take this values to the right hand side and uh, here uh, you can see it is charge balance because this is positive 1 and uh, this oxidation state is 0. This is minus 1, so it will lead to minus 2 and electron is uh, minus 1, so it will be plus 2, so as a whole it will be 0. So, one can say that when redox half cell reaction is written in the oxidation direction, then the stoichiometric part for oxidation is uh, positive, uh, for electron also it is positive, whereas for the reductant it is negative and the reverse is true for the reduction direction. So, the sign changes and anion and cation that can depend on the case an oxidant or reductant. I can cite one example, reductant can be neutral, it can be cationic or it can be anionic. So, for example, here you see the lithium is electropositive material, uh, it is oxidized and giving electron. Uh, so, this part is neutral, uh, this part is cationic and uh, this one uh, is uh, anionic. So, it can bear any charge, this uh, uh, it can bear any charge depending on the reaction of interest. We can cite a more complicated situation, several species are involved in redox half cell by convention only those who have actually exchanged electrons are mentioned in the name of the redox couple. So, if I consider uh, this silver chloride and silver couple, so as you can see silver chloride uh, is reacting this uh, with this electron and chloride ion uh, this species is neither oxidized nor reduced, but plays a major role in the reaction. So, a given species in the oxidant in one couple and the reductant uh, may be in the other couple. So, this example is uh, uh, ferrous Fe2 plus um, that uh, is an uh, oxidant um, in this particular couple Fe2 plus Fe couple. And uh, if you consider this reaction, then Fe2 plus the same Fe2 plus that is a reductant when you consider Fe3 plus uh, by Fe2 plus couple. So, now I will introduce the term uh, oxidation number for any compound, the method for writing how the overall charge is preserved is illustrated is this simple uh, relation. It says that the summation of the number of elements in the compound into its oxidation number that will give you the charge number of the compound. So, there are certain rules oxidation number for hydrogen in most of the component is plus 1, but excluding dihydrogen where it is 0 or hydride when it is minus 1. Similarly, for oxygen usually is minus 2 
excluding dihydrogen sorry dioxygen where it is 0 or in peroxide H2O2 it is minus 1 and fluorinated compound with oxygen and fluorine bond uh, this is plus 1. Oxidation number for halogen, uh, chlorine, bromine, fluorine, fluorine, iodine is minus 1 except X2 um, where uh, a more electronegative element such as oxygen in case of ClO minus or ClO4 minus it is positive. So, chlorine uh, acts as a positive oxidation number. Oxidation number of alkali atom, example lithium, sodium, potassium, etc., is plus 1 except in metal. In case of metal, it is 0. So, cited some representative example uh, MnO4 minus. This is an anion where oxidation number of manganese is plus 7 because you know oxygen is minus 2 as far as this. Uh, so, this is coming to plus 7. When you consider uh, LiX MnO2, one of the most prominent battery material, these two, oxidation number of lithium is plus 1, oxygen is minus 2, manganese here is plus 4 minus x. And I will leave it on you to determine the oxidation state of manganese. As you can see, lithium is plus 1, oxygen is minus 8. So, manganese uh, is coming. Uh, plus 7 out of 2. So, part of it is plus 3 state and plus part of it is in plus 4 state. So, that has important implication when I will be talking about the storage uh, battery, we will talk more about it. Now, you should know how to write a redox half cell reaction. There are certain steps. First step is preserving, for example, Fe2O3 and FeO, preserving the Fe element. So, here you will have to multiply FeO by 2 uh, to get this one. Second step is to identify the number of electron that is exchanged and you can easily calculate it. It is 2 oxidation state and this one is 3 oxidation state and this is minus 1, 2 into minus 1. So, the charge neutrality is maintained. So, uh, number of electron that is exchanged is 2. Then charge is preserved both sides by adding a proton because here you have added electrons. So, you will have to add a proton to uh, balance the charge. So, it is coming Fe2O3 plus 2E plus 2H plus and then preserving the oxygen and hydrogen by adding water molecules. So, 2Fe plus H2O equal to Fe2O3 plus 2E minus plus 2H plus. I am pr pretty sure that you are familiar with this kind of uh, writing. So, this is just for a brush up of your knowledge. There is a second method which is slightly different. Uh, initially preserving the Fe element for Fe2O3 and FeO couple. So, this is going like this. In step 2, preserving oxygen by adding H2O. So, uh, you get uh, 2 FeO plus H2O is Fe2O3. Then preserving hydrogen by adding H plus 2 Fe plus H2O that will lead to Fe2O3 plus twice H plus and preserving as a step 4, preserving the charge by adding electron. So, you come up with the same uh, equation uh, which you got uh, through the first method. Charge balance also you can do uh, by addition of hydroxyl ions instead of proton. So, in this first step, in step 3, instead of proton, we can add a, a, a uh, hydroxyl ion uh, to get this to get this relation and again I will have to preserve oxygen by adding water. So, I add water to get this relation. Similarly, for this case also uh, I can add H2O and H2O will uh, dissociate and uh, this is due to a proton removal. So, this re reaction I can multiply by plus 1 and this one uh, multiply by minus 2 and then we balance this one and we get the same relation as we got uh, by hydroxyl ion addition. So, these are standard protocol that is followed while uh, we write a redox reaction. So, not everything is uh, uh, there where water and protons are uh, involved. So, when writing the equilibrium, 
uh, other simple ions that also can be added. So, one of the popular uh, things are alkali metal ion or halide ion, uh, they uh, are also involved. So, one example is cited for the redox uh, half, re half cell reaction of manganese oxide and LIX MnO2. So, you can see that uh, uh, this one is uh, oxidized like this. So, manganese part, um, I put the oxidation number here and oxidation number here and here. So, for this half cell reaction to be balanced, you must add lithium into it. So, you add lithium here and this is uh, the redox which is uh, quite well balanced. Writing overall electrochemical reaction uh, from combining two half cell reaction that is also possible. So, redox reaction between silver plus to silver or copper 2 plus to copper um, couples that example is cited here. And in order to maintain the balance, you will have to multiply this by minus 2 and this one by plus 1. So, here simply we have eliminated the electron as you can see and one can see that the copper is getting oxidized and silver get reduced without even knowing the reduction potential of which we can determine that. So, Different types of charge carriers, they may be involved in an electrochemical reactions, electron, holes, ions, ion could be anion or cations or simply simple complex ions, vacancies could be involved, charge defects in a solid structure, they all play important role in uh, defining the electrochemical reactions. So, there are different classes of conductor, we will call electronic conductor which are eventually ionic insulator which are metal uh, and also superconductor and semiconductor. For example, silicon it is having valence uh, V impurities, vanadium impurities to N type and when valence 3 type of impurity leads to P type of charge carrier. Similarly, ionic conductor uh, which are electronically insulator. So, electrolytic solution uh, aqueous KCl solution is one example, molten salts, sodium chloride at high temperature that is another example. Solid oxides which is eventually used in SOFC and also polymer electrolyte like lithium based salt, lithium perchlorate that is dissolved in polyethylene oxide. They are the examples of ionically conducting solids which are used in electrochemistry. Apart from that, we use separator in certain applications, separating two electrolytes are necessary to avoid rapid mixing while it ensures the current flow by allowing ions through uh, selective movement through the separator. There are types of separator, uh, usually porous material, ceramic, fritted glass, felt, uh, paper filters, they are used. They usually have poor selectivity. Um, selectivity to ions, but slow down the mixing process of the electrolytic solutions. Then there are perm selective membrane, which are basically polymer such as naphion or resin with ionic group fixed on the material. The anionic membrane lets anion through the uh, block cations at the membrane solution interface. Then we have ionic membrane, which are able to conduct only uh, specific ionic species, for example, Nasican or ZRO2 at high temperature. ZRO2 is a selective oxygen ion uh, conductor. The ion moves via conducting sites at atomic level and that yield better selectivity. The purpose of these separators for different applications will become clearer when I will talk, I will proceed with the course and discuss various types of storage battery. Mixed conductor, uh, which are both ionic and electronic uh, type of conduction is prevailing here. So, they are perovskite type oxides are famous for that. One example is lanthanum strontium cobalt oxide that is used in fuel cell or SOFC type cells. Insertion material, uh, which is uh, potassium, uh, KXC graphite or tungsten oxide bronzes, plasmas are one of the examples, molten salts 
containing alkali metal that can be cited as example or liquid alumina containing dissolved sodium which reveals solvated electrons and ions resulting from auto protolysis of ammonia. They are the examples of mixed conductor. Now, it is important that electrode and electrolyte this interface that is important. So, you can use simple electrode in electrochemical system. Uh, for example, copper metallic electrode is dipped in copper sulphate solution or you can have modified electrode in electrochemical system. For example, aluminum metal that is coated with a composite material like ionically conducting solid plus electronically conducting solids and a binder which bond this material on the current collector. So, they are the example of mixed conductors. So, that is also used for certain cases. Uh, electrochemical half cells, they are electrochemical half cells, uh, they, they have electrode with reference electrode. So, when an interface that sees a single redox half cell reaction occurring, the electrode where oxidation takes place is called anode and the electrode where the reduction takes place that is known as cathode. Apart from that, there are several electronic junctions between two conductors. Ionic junctions are also possible between two ionic conductor or electronically electrochemical interface that is the interface between electronic and ionically conducting medium. So, I am just citing these examples and this is one of the examples of this so called uh, conducting composite um, uh, electrode material where you can see the active material which is basically ionically conducting you have uh, it is intimately mixed with uh, uh, carbonaceous material which is electronically conducting and a binder material which bind the whole mass active mass plus um, electronically conducting material together with the current collector. So, we will come back again uh, to this. Now, let us uh, have a simple description of a uh, so called Daniel cell. So, you have zinc uh, as one of the electrode uh, which, is dissolved, which, which, which is dipped in zinc sulphate aqueous solution and again copper is dipped in copper sulphate aqueous solution. Uh, so, that uh, make the um, Daniel cell and you can see there is a salt bridge uh, which is basically potassium nitrate aqueous solution uh, that connects these two. So, this is an electrochemical cell having only two electrochemical interface and consequently with two electrodes. It can be split into two half cell where each of them has one electrochemical interface. A salt bridge that is shown here is required so that one solution could not quickly accumulate uh, positive and other negative charges. So, reaction is not halted. So, now you can um, have the polarity of this electrode. The voltage is the potential difference between two terminal uh, that is measured in volt and uh, E sometimes we use is the potential or voltage of the half cell of one individual cell. U is also termed as a electromotive force when there is no load involved in the cell. Zinc electrode is negatively charged with respect to the electrolyte. So, that leads to the separation of charge and generates a potential difference between the counter electrode and electrolyte and I have termed this as phi C e, C stands, stands for counter electrode and C u is the working electrode that is positive with respect to the electrolyte. So, that generates a reduction potential. So, phi working electrode. So, your u is phi of working electrode minus phi of counter electrode. Usually reduction potential is positive and the oxidation potential is treated as negative. So, you can pass current forcefully and we call this is electrolyzer mode. So, electrolysis both terminals of the cell are connected to a power supply that is very important. The cell behaves like an electric load and direction of the current is dictated by the external power supply which one is you put plus and which one you put minus and this is exactly the case again I will come back to it when we will talk about rechargeable battery 
So, during recharge, um, the battery recharging of the secondary battery, we use the force current mode. So, in uh, force current mode, as you can see, um, electrochemical system where electrolysis is taking place, um, or in case of a secondary battery when it is being recharged, the electrons entered in the negative electrode. So, it is entered in the negative electrode. And there is no free electron here in the electrolyte and because the electron cannot durably accumulate at the interface, only the reduction reaction can use these uh, electrons. The negative electrode is therefore, cathode of the cell and the other electrode is treated as anode in the cell and this is different from uh, the free mode uh, or the discharge mode of the cell. So, in case of electrolyzer or the recharging battery, the positive electrode is anode and the negative electrode is cathode. There are certain cases where spontaneous current flow um, uh, electrolyzer mode. So, this electrochemical system working as a power source supplying energy uh, to, uh, uh, to the external load. So, this is, uh, this is actually the spontaneous uh, current flow mode. Uh, not the electrolyzer mode, I am sorry, uh, but this is a spontaneous uh, electron flows. So, this reaction occurs in the electrochemical cell which imposes the direction of the current by itself. So, that is shown in this figure, the external circuit, the current flow is from positive pole of the power supply towards the negative pole. In the electrochemical system set in power source mode, electrons enter in the positive electrode. So, only a reduction reaction can use the electrons. The positive electrode is therefore, cathode of the electrochemical cell. So, whether it is spontaneous or forced current flow, I have summarized it that operating mode in case of a battery. Uh, the reaction is spontaneous and electrolyzer it is non spontaneous. Here the positive electrode is cathode which is undergoing reduction, electrolyzer mode it is anode which is undergoing oxidation. This is negative electrode anode which is oxidation, this is cathode for reduction. Here also cathode for reduction for positive electrode and this one is termed as negative electrode and when it is anode which is oxida, oxid, oxidation is taking place, we call it is a negative electrode in case of power source mode and positive electrode in case of electrolyzer mode, the one I just described few slides back. Now, the voltage that you measure that is with respect to something. So, in order to define a potential difference suitable for electrochemistry, a reference redox couple must firstly be chosen. The H plus H2 couple is it is thermodynamically standard state and this is called standard hydrogen electrode and abbreviated as SHE. A hydrogen electrode as shown is obtained by bubbling hydrogen dihydrogen into a solution of a known pH on a platinum electrode. So, half cell is platinum, then hydrogen in one bar, then H plus with a concentration some kind of concentration C, uh, not necessarily always it will be one mole. It involves H plus H2 couple. So, H2 is given to H plus plus 2E. For one mole uh, acid, it is called normal hydrogen uh, electrode is abbreviated as NHE. The proton activity of an acid with concentration equal to 1 mole per liter is not really is equal to 1. So, that the value of NHE potential is measured to be about 6 millivolt uh, per standard hydrogen electrode. There are other reference electrode, one is silver chloride, where uh, silver silver chloride uh, is used with KCL solution with a concentration uh, C and uh, the couple reaction is this one and KCL concentration is taken 1 to 3 moles per liter. Um, and the value is uh, with respect to standard hydrogen uh, electrode it is 0 0.21. Uh, 
we have uh, mercury based calomel electrode so mercury is put in the calomel uh, that is mercury chloride it is in contact with kcl as shown in this accompanying figure and uh, the reaction is uh, something like this and kcl solution is having a concentration 5 moles per liter uh, around and this uh, electrode uh, the value of e for standard calomel um, electrode is about plus 0.24 so you can convert it uh, from she to calomel and one example is given so you have 0.24 here in the full scale so for the calomel it will become 1 minus 0.24 that is about 0.76 when current flow in a electrochemical cell by definition the system is not under equilibrium however if no current flows then it is a open circuit condition the system could either be a thermodynamic equilibrium or not the voltage between the terminal of the electrochemical cell with current flow is often compared with the open circuit voltage so this particular parameter um, is called over potential or over voltage so this is defined as uh, eta overall that is u minus uh, u uh, when no current is flowing so that is u minus emf so no current is flowing is emf so open circuit state of the system is not in equilibrium then the term polarization is used so overall polarization is uh, same u minus u when i is not equal to zero for laboratory cell you can have a uh, reference cell uh, inserted in it uh, so for better understanding uh, you can do the same thing with respect to the reference electrode and estimate the uh, respective uh, uh, polarization and over potential value the way it is shown so uh, when you set up the experimentation in, uh, in ele electro ele electrochemistry three parameters they play important role in each electrochemical experiments one is time current and voltage it is therefore necessary to have high performance voltmeter and ammeter to uh, have this uh, kind of uh, experimentation to set up a source of controlled current um, we call it a galvanostatic setup the control parameter here is current as a function of time and the response is um, the measure of voltage u or a potential e as a function of t we call this is potentiometry and when the setup source uh, is control voltage that is potentiostat the control parameter is voltage or potential and the response is measured the current we call this is amperometry so this potentiometry and the amperometry they are the main category of electrochemical experiments and we will come back to it in our future lecture so in a number of amperometry experiments sophisticated equipments used to gain precise control over the voltage between working and the reference electrode when you are considering a three electrode system this is more accurate than controlling the voltage between working electrode and counter electrode. So in such case only overall voltage is monitored and the distribution of voltage between two interface cannot be controlled. So as you can see in the diagram no current flow through this reference electrode and the dotted arrow uh, that symbolize the existing link between the voltage indicated by the voltmeter that is the control voltage between the working electrode and reference electrode and the actual voltage delivered by the power supply between working electrode and counter electrode. So working electrode is the anode with current is positive with the usual convention and the electrochemical cell works in the electrolyzer mode. So there are uh, uh, certain main electrochemical method so you apply a constant voltage is imposed which is potentiostatic according to our definition and i versus t the transient is measured and this is the steady state we call this is chronoamperometry 
Similarly, galvanostatic measurement yields u as a function of t or e as a function of t, we call this is a chronopotentiometry. Then in case of chronoamperometry, note that the current transient is in a single step and double step imposed voltage and resultant current transient. Uh, so, this is this will be the voltage transient that is either in the single step or in the double step and the current transient which is a measurable parameter uh, that uh, shows this kind of feature and this is termed as chronoamperometry. Then we have volta amperometry or uh, voltametry. Here a linear potential sweep is imposed defined as a scan rate uh, volt uh, per second and response is I uh, that is a function of U of course and uh, the direction of the switch is reversed in case of cyclic voltametry. So, this is also an useful measurement for understanding the electrochemical reactions. In case of uh, impedance metry, applied signal is usually sinusoidal with low amplitude and controlled frequency and result could be either a Bode plot or a Nyquist plot and this particular thing I will discuss in details in the later part of the course. So, uh, typical uh, electrochemical device, uh, this um, electrochemical studies required an apparatus that is capable of controlling and measuring the voltage and current between the terminals of the electrochemical cell. So, depending on the specific application, intelligent modules can be added to the basic potential stack. Specific current, high current application module up to 100 ampere that can meet the need of the storage or energy supply and low current device meet the need of material research. So, various modular systems are available. A cyclic voltammetry experiments required a potential stat that is coupled with a signal generator and some of the commercial equipment also offers the EIS measurement with excellent software for simulation. So, these are the actual uh, equipment that is available in the market uh, to do this various electrochemical measurements. So, uh, that ends uh, the lecture 1 and uh, the red marked one is your study material, um, a book by uh, Poignet et al, Electrochemistry, the basic with examples by Springer page 1 to 46 and apart from that the book by Newnham and A.J. Bard, they are bibles of electrochemistry and you can consider uh, to clarify your fundamental ideas. So, in this uh, particular lecture we covered socio-economic importance of electrochemistry, then we talked about uh, oxidation reduction, then oxidation number, then how to write a redox half reaction then the concept of conducting media, electrode and interface, then we talked about a basic Daniel electrochemical cell, then we introduced the concept of the force current flow in the electrolyzer mode or spontaneous current flow in the power source mode and uh, the reference electrodes uh, uh, we uh, defined three types of major types of reference electrodes and experimentation in electrochemistry we covered. Thank you for your attention.